Hey, Bernard is on. Absolutely it is. It's possible. First of all, we hope that our Republican colleagues understand the kind of pain and desperation that is out there and work with us to respond uh, to that desperation. Do you see any indication of that? Uh, it's too early to tell. I certainly hope that it will happen. But second of all, there are tools that we have. Uh, the president has executive orders, uh, which can make a significant impact on the lives of people. And second of all, and I say this as the incoming chairman of the Budget Committee, we have a process, as you know, called budget reconciliation. And that process for a number of issues, not all, uh, requires only 50 votes uh, plus the vice president. So there is a lot that we can do through budget reconciliation, and I intend to do everything I can uh, to make that happen. You, you simplified it well. I'm not going to get into the term reconciliation, but basically the, the vice the president has a choice. He can choose to go a route where he tries to pass something with 50 votes plus one, or where he tries to get uh, re Republican Beast. bipartisan buy-in on the big plans. He seems to indicate that he wants to try that bipartisan approach, uh, which it really is at odds, or at least in tension, with what you're talking about. Well, yes and no. I have no That's problem with cool. reaching out to Republicans. I would prefer to do it that That's way. Before you do. But if we hear very early on that Republicans do not want to act in a way that meets the needs of working people in this country or the middle class, sorry, we're going to do it alone. Uh, the truth of the matter uh, is that Republicans use budget reconciliation over the years to provide massive tax breaks to the rich, to try to repeal the Affordable Care Act. We're going to use it to protect uh, and the middle class of this country. Well, how can you not example. love them? Uh, we have a minimum wage here in Washington, a national minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. That's a starvation wage. You got tens of millions of people working for starvation wages. We got to raise that minimum wage to at least 15 bucks an hour. We can do that through reconciliation. And I intend to do my best to make that happen. And, and Senator, do you, do you think you can get this done as you're also pursuing the Senate trial of President Trump? And how quickly will that uh, happen? How quickly can it get done? Well, George, that's what I meant when I said we got to walk and show the American people we can walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. Yes, bubble I think gum. we have got to impeach Trump. We cannot have a president who incites insurrection against the government that he was sworn to defend. You gotta do that. But at the same time, you can't spend weeks and months on that. Move it quickly. Confirm Biden's nominees quickly. And then let us simultaneously address the terrible health and economic crises facing this country. We gotta move very aggressively to make sure that vaccines that we need are produced, that they are distributed, and that they are in people's arms as quickly as possible. We need to create jobs. We need to raise the minimum wage. We need to do so many things, and we got to do it immediately, as quickly as we possibly can. Senator Sanders, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Chris. I want to bring in Rebecca Jarvis on this point. And, and Re Rebecca, we're, we're dealing with a, a paradox, with, and the president is going to have to be dealing with this paradox right now. I think Legend. as he was speaking, the stock market hit another record high as America as a whole is dealing with a jobs crisis unlike any we've seen in a generation. That's right, George. And, and you can look at the stock market hitting a new record high as a sigh of relief on Wall Street, as a vote of confidence on Wall Street. Absolute but legend, bro. The economy is still here. And now, as President Biden inherits an economy that is, in some respects, worse off than the one he inherited with President Obama in the Great Recession. In fact, in order to get our country back to full employment, he will have to create more jobs than he did with President Obama with about 10 million people still out of work as a result of this pandemic. And when you think about the types of work that needs to be done, the stimulus measures, uh, the number of people who are still far behind on mortgage payments, rent payments, the number of people who are still collecting some form of unemployment benefits, and the fact that getting that money into their hands has been difficult uh, in the last handful of months. The people who need the money most, in many cases, are not getting the kinds of resources that they need, the types of industries that are most impacted by this crisis, without a pandemic, without the pandemic and a full recovery of the pandemic, those very people will still be facing unemployment, George, in areas like restaurants and hotels and travel. These types of jobs are not set to come back without a full recovery of this pandemic.
Rebecca Jarvis. Thanks. The presidential motorcade making its way across Memorial Bridge to Arlington Memorial Cemetery. The president will be there shortly. We're going to take a quick break and join them when he arrives. Okay. Uh, while they're taking a quick break, I'm going to take a quick break.